Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I have the pleasure to be talking to you about uh, cell surface and some junctions between cells. That's right, you know, the outside of the cell can be almost as important, if not more important, than the inside of the cell. And so, one of the very famous structures in cell biology is a cell wall, and I say plant cell wall, but, you know, the truth is there's many organisms that possess a cell wall, and so when you say that prokaryotes possess a cell wall, you, you, I mean, obviously that's the most numerous organism there is on the earth, and so it's certainly a common structure. Fungi possess it, and some protists have it as well. But I want to make sure right out of the gate that, I, that I'm clear with the fact that the, the walls of the prokaryotes are a little bit different. There's peptin and glycan layers, and then the fungi have this uh, interesting wall made of chitin. And so the emphasis in my discussion today with you is on plant cell walls. And so plant cell walls are primarily made up of uh, sugars and a, a few proteins. And so uh, the sugar that's primarily responsible for a plant cell wall is this polysaccharide known as cellulose. And you can see it here with the scanning electron microscope. It's pretty cool. And so you might know this already, but plants have these cell walls to protect them and to maintain their shape. So kind of like a shoebox, it sort of surrounds the membrane. So it's on the outside of the cell membrane and it prevents excessive uh, uptake of water and it ma ma maintains the shape of the cell and protection. And also it supports the plant against the forces of gravity and it's really a strong uh, molecule, uh, the cellulose. And so therefore the rigidity of, of a tree trunk and the fact that it could rise hundreds of feet into the air against gravity is all tribute to the to the cell wall. And so the basic design of the cell wall is made up of these microfibrils. And so it's sort of like, um, if you think like it, it's steel reinforced concrete, really strong. And so you have like cables and cables of these uh, sugars connected. And what's interesting about cellulose uh, in, in addition to it being uh, a combination of other proteins and polysaccharides. But the thing about the cellulose that makes it really strong is that it's held to get together by beta uh, glycosidic linkages. And so those are very diff difficult to hydrolyze. And so cellulose, sometimes just known as fiber, is very strong and it, it can't be broken down very easily. Okay, So cellulose, really strong, important component of the cell wall. So most cells, most plant cells have what, it, what it's referred to as a primary cell wall. And you can see it right here, the primary cell wall in this uh, transmission electron micrograph. Although in the middle here, there is something called the middle lamella. And then that has some sticky polysaccharides in there as well, like principally a, a, a sugar you might have heard of called pectin. And all of that provides like strength and holds it together. And in some plant cells that are specialized to be extra rigid have a secondary cell wall and you can see that right here and so that makes those particular cells extremely really 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 tough okay so you might c consider that for example walnuts uh, things like coconut shells those have cell walls secondary as well as primary um, one of the most common cells of a, of a tree that has this secondary cell wall is simply the vascular tissue. It's a type of cell that conducts water. And so this particular vascular tissue is known as xylem. And the xylem cells have a primary and a secondary cell wall. And you can see them here again, transmission electron micrograph. Water literally travels up and down these plants or like hollow straws. And the cells are dead, which make them good conduits of water but more importantly, their secondary cell wall makes them really, really rigid, okay? And so that's, that's an interesting point. And so these cells that conduct water called xylem have a secondary cell wall which contains uh, ligand, which is another, again, uh, sugar that helps to strengthen and waterproof the cells. And so here you can see the water going up. It sort of reminds me, I put in a picture here of a uh, person holding straws and so this is what sort of it looks like to me when you look down at it how the water travels up this these cells and so this the cell wall the purpose of the cell wall 
is not only protection and rigidity and strength, but it protects against sort of mechanical stresses that a plant cell might endure. And then it also helps to limit uh, from large molecules entering into the cell, especially ones that are toxic. And uh, maybe most importantly, or certainly one of the more important functions of the cell wall is that cells like plants can take in water, but they, they're not prone to bursting or, or cytolysis like animal cells because their cell wall protects them. As the membrane pushes out on the cell wall, it pushes and it maintains like turgor pressure, but it doesn't allow the cell to actually break. And so it prevents the cell from osmotic lysis, if you will. Now, it doesn't mean that it's a total fortress. It doesn't, you know, completely impenetrable. It does have holes in it called plasma desmata, which allow for the movement of, of some nutrients, some waste, some water uh, can travel between cells uh, with these like literally physical holes called plasma desmata. And you can see it here uh, that, that transverse uh, between cells. Okay. And so plant cells are, are perforated, meaning with little holes or channels that allow uh, the cells to share a cytosol or cytoplasm between them, which is pretty cool. Now, I also want to talk to you in this video about animal cells. And so animal cells don't have this cell wall, but, but the outside of an animal cell is pretty cool. It's referred to the, as the extracellular matrix. Matrix is like the space, extra meaning like on the outside. And so though they lack a cell wall, they have this elaborate protein in between cells and on the outside of cells connected to the membrane. The primary protein in between cells in this matrix is collagen. You may have heard of that protein before. It's a, uh, a quaternary protein. It's made up of, of three strands, and it's also very rigid, kind of like cellulose, but it's not a sugar. It's a, it's a protein, but it's very strong. Okay, and so one of the more common cells of, of the body or a human is, uh, are these fibroblast cells. And so these fibroblast cells secrete lots of collagen. And so these collagen threads are on the extracellular matrix. And so, which is kind of awesome. And so you get, you're like, well, here's a cell, here's a cell. And then all of this collagen protein exists in the matrix area right here. And you're like, well, what, what tissue has something like this? Uh, tissues that have this, um, well, it's found widely throughout the body. The skin has this as well, but, but I just want to point out um, fibrous connective tissue, which is composes of, of a tendon, which holds a muscle to a bone, has a lot of collagen fibers in it, and ligaments, which connect bones to bones, have a lot of collagen fiber on the extracellular matrix. And so what's cool about that extracellular matrix, if you remember those blue lines that I was drawing like that, these collagen fibers are really big, and what they can do is attach to the membrane-bound proteins of the of the cell. Okay, here's here's the cell right there. And so what's interesting is there's a whole connection between the internal proteins, of, or in other words, the microfilaments of the cytoskeleton, which are composed of, in this case, actin, and then there's also some some tubulin proteins forming the cytoskeleton. But what I want to get at is the fact that the cell membrane is associated with these collagen fibers as well as other glycoproteins. And so this can allow the cell uh, to interact with the matrix, which is pretty cool. Okay. And now I want to get into a discussion between uh, the fact that between cells, there's, there's uh, some activity literally between uh, neighboring cells. Now, if you're unfamiliar with, uh, with animal tissue, this particular type of animal tissue, since it's, the cells are very close together like this, it's a characteristic of a type of tissue called epithelial tissue. This happens to have the protein cilia on the outside as well, helping to move things around. But what I want to get at is that the cells are literally like in contact, physical contact, and they, they're also, they're often held together and there's sometimes some communication between the cells and so let me get into that to make sure that this is a little clearer so i could say that they adhere and they interact and they communicate but that seems a bit abstract until you see examples of this and so uh, the last part of this discussion i want to discuss some three particular classic 
um, interactions or junctions between cells. And so this is one cell over here, and this is another cell and another cell. And so these are epithelial cells that are really close together. So in other words, let me go back over here. It's like this cell and this cell and this cell are close together. They have what are known as tight junctions. So these are intercellular links. Tight junctions I want to talk about. Then they have desmosomes, which are shown here. And then they have gap junctions, which are shown over here. And these are uh, transmission electron micrographs. That's exactly what a gap a tight junction looks like, and that's what a desmosome looks like, and this is what a gap junction looks like. And so what are these things? Well, they mainly occur in epithelial tissue because the cells are so close together. If I went back to these fibroblast cells a moment ago that I was showing, these cells are too far apart, and that's a characteristic of connective tissue. You wouldn't have these cellular interactions or junctions unless the cells are really close together. And so that's why they are, they're found in epithelial tissue. And so tight junctions, desmosomes, and gap junctions. And so this is a picture right here. This is free space. This is a picture of epithelial tissue. This happens to be a uh, microscope photograph of epithelial tissue, which is found in the inside of your bladder. It's a type of epithelial tissue called transitional because it sort of, when it stretches, can be very thin. And when the bladder is empty, it can be a little bit more stratified. So it's called transitional. Now, the thing is, the bladder, as you may or may not know, let me go, let me go yellow here for urine. There's a lot of urine that the, that the bladder stores, and sometimes there's some toxic chemicals and things in here, urea, etc. You don't want that fluid to be moving out of the bladder. You want the bladder to be kind of waterproof. And so, tight junctions are the solution to this. Tight junctions are these little tiny uh, connections that cells have with one another that prevent any fl fluids from getting through, and so they're waterproof. No water can pass through cells, adjacent cells, and no ions can pass through adjacent cells, and that's really useful. So in other words, um, if, there were, if there was water here in the, um, and the cells didn't have these type jun junctions, perhaps water could leak in between the cells, but these tight junctions prevent leakage from occurring. And so this is literally a physical picture of these proteins which sort of hold and connect epithelial tissues together. And those are called, appropriately, tight junctions, making the cells really tight. Okay, so desmosomes are kind of like this as well, but they're a little bit more complicated. They're made up of this, um, these glycoproteins which connect the cells. Okay. And they're sort of like rivets. I don't know if you're if that's a great analogy, but they're like these sort of connection metal connections between sheets of of metal holding them together. And so the details of this gets a little complicated, but there's some filaments that go inside the cell made up of a protein called keratin. But basically, they're anchoring junctions. They anchor and fasten cells together and hold them together, and they make them really strong. And so the skin has a lot of uh, desmosomes because those cells experience kind of a lot of stress. And so th those are also epithelial cells. And so this is a picture of a desmosome or an anchoring junction, and it shows them here in the trans transmission electron microscope. And so basically, you're anchoring cells together. And this is a beautiful picture showing the, the, uh, the, the keratin right here and the protein, the discs that are located here. And so these are two cells being anchored together, holding them in place. And then finally, uh, like kind of like plasma desmata, animal cells have literal tunnels between them called gap junctions. And again, that makes sense because it's a gap between the cells. And it literally provides the cytoplasmic uh, uh, solutes to be able to move between adjacent cells. And so there are special proteins that create these pores between cells, and so ions and uh, sugars and amino acids and small molecules can pass between and therefore communicate. That's sometimes useful. Um, in a, an example of this would be in cardiac muscle. It helps to spread action potential and in neurons that they communicate ions across these gap junctions between the cells. So this is one cell and another cell and a gap junction between them. And so finally, here's a cell that possesses all of these. Here's the tight junctions preventing water from going through, an anchoring junction here, and a gap junction, which allows molecules to uh, pass between cells. So I hope you enjoyed this video on 
uh, the cell surface, the extracellular matrix, and some, some junctions between animal cells. Thanks for watching.